Nobody wants to be called too old. Clearly, that's weighing on the president. And I mean, even in our national track, I mean, this is weighing on him more than it is Donald Trump. Nationally, a good chunk of voters, about half, think Donald Trump's too old. But they're far more likely to say that about Joe Biden. What we did in this survey was we kind of forced voters to pick. We said, do you think Donald Trump is too old? Do you think Joe Biden is too old? Do you think they're both too old? And where voters are inclined to go is Joe Biden. Clearly, this is something that is a big problem for him. Now, one ray of hope for him here is the fact that a good chunk, like four in 10 voters, said they, they think both of them are too old. And that might give Biden a bit of an opening as we're moving forward. You know, Donald Trump has been campaigning for president for the Republican nomination for a while now, but he's not as dominant as he will be in the coming months as he takes the mantle, uh, likely, of the Republican nominee. I think you saw President Biden on uh, late night TV trying to flag to voters that the, uh, the, the, the former president mm -hmm. is pretty old, too. And so I think the president, uh, the current president might be leaning on some of these other descriptors like dangerous to try to remind a lot of these voters yeah. from 2020 why they didn't like Donald Trump in the first place. Well, talk to me about that, uh, Eli. It's great to have you back. By yeah. the way, I don't know what would you rather be too old or too dangerous? Too dangerous. Seems like that might be a bigger problem. <laughs> I mean, whatever we've been talking about these surveys, I mean, the way we've been kind of thinking about the election isn't necessarily about issues. I mean, it's almost about senility versus right. criminality. And which of those two things is going to matter more to the electorate right now? Donald Trump has an edge, but I'm going to bang the hammer on this nail so many times. The American people have, are not tuned in to Donald Trump like they used to be. And the coming campaign and the job of the Biden campaign in the coming months is going to be able to remind voters why they didn't like Donald Trump four years ago. And I think what we're seeing on the legal front on the press the danger bucket here is going to take center stage in the coming months as Donald Trump is at trial after trial defending himself from a range of serious felony charges. And not to mention the kind of talk he's doing on issues like NATO kind of changing the America's place in the world. There's a good chunk of the electorate that is leaning isolationist, but it's not everybody. It's not even everybody in the Republican Party. And we saw that stick out in the open ends questions. I mean, the very first thing we ask is what voters are seeing, reading, or hearing about these candidates. And without any prompting, a good number of folks li listed NATO. And so people are starting to take note of some of these things, but it's just not as widespread as the Biden campaign needs it to be in order to damage Donald Trump uh, ahead of November. Well, as we think about the NATO question and as we've considered the U.S. relationship with our allies, how Congress or members of it, for example, view that a lot of them say we need to be focusing greater attention on issues here at home, on our own borders. And on that point, Eli, both Donald Trump and Joe Biden are making trips to the border today. And that's something that came up in the poll, the issue of immigration. A majority, we found, still hold Biden and Democrats and responsible for the migrant surge we are seeing there. But I found it interesting. Blame for congressional Republicans and the Trump administration went up five percentage points. Is that because the border bill tanked in Congress? Is that telling in some way that voters recognize the role Republicans played in that? Yeah, I mean, it, what we're seeing nationally is that more voters than ever since we started tracking see a crisis at the U.S.-Mexico border. As, few, as more voters have seen the economy improving a bit, more voters are listing immigration as their number one issue in the 2024 elections. And as this process in Washington has played out, what we have noticed is fewer voters are blaming foreign conditions, economic conditions, war, and more are blaming Washington. And Joe Biden and congressional Democrats heed the bulk of that blame, but it's not just them. Since we did this last survey, since this bipartisan border deal fell apart on Capitol Hill, it does appear that some voters are taking note that Republicans are part of the problem too. It's not a lot, but it's some. It's about one in five voters now. That's up five points about congressional Republicans. Some voters are blaming the Trump administration more than they were a while ago. And, you know, this is happening in Arizona, places that are close to the border, but also across the swing state map. Fascinating. Uh, I was talking to our own Michael McKee earlier, 
Eli, about something called the observer effect. I know it's something that uh, you pollsters are very well aware of. The act of observing something can frequently change the way we look at it and therefore polling results. If you keep asking people if Joe Biden is too old, they're going to keep saying he's too old, right? Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, and part of that is that he is old. Like, people know that. They're not dumb. They know that the president is in his 80s. He has slips on TV from time to time. There's reporting coming out about him that's not so good. Um, the question we're going to be watching is Donald Trump has slips, too. I mean, he's referred to running against President Obama, who's not been in the White House since 2020 mm -hmm. or since 2016. He's referred to um, Nikki Haley as the Speaker of the House on January 6th. These things are not so salient right now. But as more and more people tune into this, I mean, a lot of voters, at least a few weeks ago, weren't so sure that Donald Trump was going to be the nominee for the Republican Party. People are not paying attention to this like we are here in Washington. And so when Donald Trump takes center stage in the coming months, he's doing his rallies, he's showing up in communities in some of these swing states. Uh, it's going to be a reality check for him and whether voters uh, see him as too old, just like they do President Biden.